today's demonstration is how to draw in your tabletop, paint with watercolor your cast shadow, and paint your tabletop. What we've already done is mixed two tabletop colors, a lighter one that represents our entire tabletop, a second color that represents our cast shadow. There should be an extreme difference in value between the tabletop color and the cast shadow color. Because in order to create the illusion of three dimensions on our objects, um, we really need to show a strong sense of light and dark. And the way we do that is, um, or the way we reinforce that is to show it in our cast shadow. First step is, look at your strip of paper and decide what color pencil is most closely matched to your um, tabletop colors. I picked dark blue and black. Next thing is you want to replicate the angles of your tabletop into your composition. The way you do that is hold your pencil, close one eye, hold your pencil like a barometer, and think about the distance between the corner of your tabletop and your bottle. My, the distance between the corner of my tabletop and my bottle is about a half an inch, so I'm gonna put a dot there. Then, I'm using my pencil like a barometer, I'm gonna determine the angle of my tabletop. It looks like this. Don't draw right through your bottle because um, there's no need for that. You already have your bottle colored in with colored pencil. Mine's just um, silhouettes because I really want you to focus on how I colored the tabletop. So I know that this corner is here. Now I'm going to look and see where this part of my tabletop intersects my shell. I'm not going to be concerned with my neighbor's tabletop at all. I'm going to ignore that altogether. Some people choose to put that in, a little extra challenge. If you want to, feel free, but I'm not going to be looking for it or expecting it. Just like that. The next step is I'm going to draw in, either in black or dark blue, doesn't really matter, where my cast shadows are. I'm only going to draw in my strongest cast shadow. I can see that my cast shadow is behind my bottle here. I chose this shell for my demonstration because it's really interesting the way the shell casts a shadow on my tabletop. This doesn't have to be drawn in perfectly, it just has to be believable. just like that. So basically, for your shell, cast shadow, you're guessing based on what you learned about drawing so far this semester. You're going to take your lighter color and color in everything except your objects. Making sure that the edge of your watercolor doesn't dry before you put a new layer on. I'm um, also, because this isn't watercolor paper, just making sure that I put one coat of watercolor on my paper. Just, I'm not going over the same space multiple times. Whenever possible, I'm creating lines that are parallel to the top and the bottom of my page. But as you can see, that's not always possible. Your watercolor might pool a little bit. That's the nature of the material and it just looks kind of nice. 
if you don't like the way the pooling looks, then perhaps watercolor isn't your favorite medium. As you can see, it's also really important that your cast shadow lines are applied lightly. And same with your tabletop line. It kind of benefits us that the corner of the table is black. Okay. Next thing you're going to do is let it dry, or you're going to hear a sound. I'm just going to hit it with a dryer. my cast shadow colors before my um, tabletop color was dry, then it would just blend together and kind of get muddy, which um, is a different look. It's not necessarily bad, but considering um, these works of art so far are very crisp and clean, I believe that that style of tabletop would work against what we're doing. Now, working right up to the edge of my bottle, I'm filling in the cast shadow. Notice I used a round brush for this. You don't need to use a round brush, but if you have a lot of detail, you might want to. May I see your water pan? I've actually decided on the fly that my cast shadow is not dark enough. So I'm adding some black in. And then, if you do that, you just want to test it on your paper. Yeah, I think that's better. I'm not going to go over that a second time until it's dry. Yes. Now I have a blue black for my cast shadow. Again, I'm just making sure that I don't go over it more than once. If your um, tabletop dries, or if your cast shadow dries and you want to go over it a second time, you can. Your goal isn't necessarily to create a solid value. As your cast shadow moves, around, moves away from your object, feel free to lighten it up. It'll just look like a really nice transition in the end. Just like that. Something that looks really nice is if you put the illusion of reflection on your table chop by adding in a little bit of the green or yellow of your bottle color. I'm going to blow dry this. And then I'm going to go down and put an extra coat of my newer, darker watercolor. Just like that.
and that's it. Thank you.